welcome to my, well, office actually. Today I received uh, a request, I suppose, from Cavco to help one of their subscribers with a small problem. And that is setting up a fourth axis, which was a home built unit uh, using GRBL or Gerbil. Unfortunately for me, I don't have a fourth axis in my shop at the moment. I am set to build my own uh, in the new year to set up with my CNC router. But when I did have a fourth axis a couple of years ago, I made a couple of videos on how to set different things up with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take apart uh, three to four videos and make one video with all the necessary information in to be able to sort this particular person's problem out. And that problem is when he has connected up his CNC router and he has used CAVCO to make the, the G codes, um, it, it only travels uh, should we say pat the way round? Okay, so it's not doing a full rotation. Um, this is fairly easily fixed, whether it's Mac 3 or GRBL. And it is simply that you need to reset the steps per revolution of the stepper motor to suit your fourth axis. Now in the videos I describe it in Mark III and I'll just show you where to make the alteration in GRBL. Now this is a listing of some of the GRBL code or standard code that the program is set up. Now if you are slaving your fourth axis with your X it is this one here you need to alter. Now what you need to do is type into the command prompt window. Now I'll just swing the camera around and show you where that is. Okay, down in this bottom corner here where the arrow is pointing there, that is the command prompt window. Now in this little window and you can only type something in there when you are connected to your little CNC router this will light up. If you're not connected into your little router this will stay sort of greyed out. What you do you type in there a two dollar signs press enter and that will fetch another screen up and in that screen you can make your alteration to your steps per. The one you're looking for in the listing of gerbil code, okay, if you're picking that up, uh, this particular one here. Now, dollar sign 100 relates to X axis. Uh, 800 represents 800 steps per millimeter. Okay, so that there is the one that you need to alter to try. You can try 500, you can try 400, but that particular one there is the one to alter. The 100 just represents, well, that is the X axis. And if you go down the listing, 101 is the Y axis. 102 is the Z axis because this particular person uh, has connected his fourth axis up and it is not rotate the fourth axis which I presume is slave to the X is only re rotating a quarter of its motion instead of presumably one full turn so that dollar sign 100 that is the one that you alter 
in the GRBL command prompt window. And when obviously when you finish using your fourth axis you need to put that back to uh, dollar sign 100 equals 800. And that will set you right back to where you were. Um, and I'll just mention one particular thing. And of course in, in Kavco it doesn't matter where you uh, set your orientation in any corner or the center. Uh, providing you set your zero zero in either the the top, the center, or the bottom of your material to start, okay, and it will rotate, uh, you know, whichever direction, you know, it, it needs to sort of go. So the first part of this film is me setting up. A, the fourth axis on my old 6012 uh, and the easiest way to do it I suppose uh, I, I actually cut some little discs out uh, and marked on the discs and uh, set it in the chuck and uh, whatever axis it was slave to I think it was the A axis um, I asked it to Mac 3 to move a certain amount of um, millimeters then and uh, I just physically measured it and just altered the steps per until the measured amount equaled the amount I was asking Mac 3 to move and I think in that case it was 50 millimeter so when you ask Mac 3 to move that axis 50 millimeter and it does you know you're right <laughs> Another thing too, when you set your fourth axis up and you presumably are uh, slaving the X axis, that's the normal one to, to slave, run the X axis into the middle of the gantry, then disconnect it. Okay? So then you know that the fourth axis then or using the fourth axis thinks it's in the middle of the table so you are going to get a full rotation uh, on your fourth axis you know if you if you set the or if you disconnected rather the x-axis if it's over to one side uh, you may not get a full rotation of the a axis there. Okay, so into the film, and I hope it helps you out. Okay, the setup I've got here now is I've made these these small discs. Uh, this particular one, uh, it's got a a 25 millimeter boss. I've just cut these out on the laser actually, and uh, this one is 100. 10 millimeters in diameter um, and I've done several of them this one's 75 millimeters this one's 50 120 and 140 uh, that's pretty well the largest diameter that um, you, you, you're going to get in this uh, particular model um, this incidentally is um, 100 millimeters by 900 millimeters okay uh, and it's got a uh, four inch chuck on it um, now on each one of these discs um, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm just putting a little marker just like this just a small mark and I've got that lined up with the DTI pointer there. So what I do then in Mac 3 um, is I set my ask Mac 3 in each axis, and in this case it's the A axis, to move the axis 50 millimeter. Okay, so it actually shows 50 millimeter on the outside diameter of this disc. Uh, and then I record that measurement and put that measurement into Mac 3 
and allow Mark 3 to alter the setting for the for the motors in Mark 3. Okay, so there's a couple of adjustments we need to make in Mark 3. Um, so what we need to do, we need to set Mark 3 up to configure for the A axis or fourth axis. So you go to config and go down to home in and limits and we need to set the A axis up. Um, these settings at the moment are pretty standard uh, in Mac 3 so we're going to, that's, that was okay soft minimum is, is fine now the soft maximum, now this isn't enough <laughs> so we're going to alter this to 400, 400 millimeters of outside or diameter travel so we'll just enable that so now what we're going to do is we're going to go to settings come down to set steps per unit choose A axes OK that and we're going to ask it to move 50 millimeters so we press OK well I can see right away that didn't move 50 millimeters so then what you do you get a pretty standard tape measure and measure the actual distance that it traveled I can tell you now that is 30 millimeters okay so the measured distance was 30 millimeters so we put in here 30 are we okay and it is saying that uh, it's going to alter this, this the step setting in Mac 4 to 100.49 100.5 we're going to accept that press OK then we're going to go back to program run I want to turn our marker back okay so now we've got our marker lined up we go through the same process again um, we're going to have to do this a couple of times because uh, you know I'm just actually measuring it with just a, a tape measure as you've seen uh, and you know you've got to do it a couple of times to get it really accurate so here we go second time okay this time uh, we should be able to get it smack on because that was just showing me that it moved 49 millimeters 49 so I think we can there we go so 102.5 precisely and we'll check it one more time That's okay and check it That is exactly 50 millimeters. So we can say 50, OK, OK, job done. And it's just really as simple as that. Now, that is set for a diameter of 100 millimeters now and it's th this is the easiest way to actually set a fourth axis up um, and it is the general diameter that I would use in a fourth axis if you wanted to change the diameter it's a simple affair to make a disc closely to the size that you uh, would require the uh, diameter of your material 
simply made. It's just something a boss for the um, for the. It's a boss for the chuck to hang on to. Fairly accurate and um, a known diameter. Uh, and in this case, it's uh, 140 millimeters diameter, which is about the largest. It might do 150 mil diameter. Um, but I, I regard 140 enough. Uh, and it goes through the same process and is very easily, very, very easily done. So what I'm doing at the moment is I'm making sure that it will actually go the full 400 millimeters, which it uh, actually is doing. So one full revolution is approximately 300 millimeters. Coming up to 400, there you go. So it's yeah, one and a third. So that's um, pretty right, and it's actually showing me on my hand controller that it is in fact it is in fact uh, it's just actually showing me on my hand controller as well that it is in fact operating to within a, a less than a thousandth of an inch so I'm very happy about that and we'll turn it back So if we come here now to Mac 3, if I can hold the camera and show you this at the same time. So I come here to Config, Motor Tuning, and you'll see that the x-axis is actually changed to the, um, the old setting of the a-axis. There's the a-axis there, and this was the setting for the x-axis so just to prove to you that I have swapped it over now then here we have the controller it's set on X so indeed the x-axis is actually running the a-axis so in other words what we've done is we have slaved the a-axis to the x-axis driver so now this is already set really to go all I have to do now is clamp this down in place and uh, if you notice too that before I disconnected the X axis um, I have set this up in the middle of the middle of the gantry um, and now we're dead in line over the center of the rotary axis so now I can clamp this onto my waste sheet in place ready for um, the piece of material to go in there for us to do this cut.